Got a problem? Solve it by working backwards, perhaps. Good day, my fellow mathematicians. I hope you're well. In this video, we're going to continue to examine those eight problem-solving strategies that are most useful for the primary mathematician, that's you. And today we're going to look at the working backwards strategy. We're going to use the working backwards strategy to solve a problem when we're given the final outcome and we need to figure out an event or multiple events that led to the outcome. When we work backwards, we're given the solution and we need to figure out what we don't know that led to that solution. Here, let's look at an example. Let's take a gander at this here problem. Gander is another word for look. It's also a word for a male goose, but that's a science lesson for another time. Tom, Bob, and Sam are brothers. Tom is the oldest and he is 10. Sam is the youngest. The brothers are two years apart in age. How old is Sam? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is grab a number line. I get the feeling that might be helpful in this problem. It says there are three brothers, Tom, Bob, and Sam. Tom is the oldest. Sam is the youngest. So that means Bob is the middle brother. It also tells us that Tom is 10. Now, when I go to my number line, I'm going to mark 10. It says that the boys are two years apart in age. Since Tom is the oldest, the other boys have to be younger. And so if we go two years back, working backwards, we see that Bob is eight. But the problem's not asking us about Bob. It's asking us, it's asking us about Sam. So we need to go another two years back, and then we get to six, and we see that Sam is six years old. And the answer to our question, Sam is six. Okay, so there you go, we're working backwards to solve for Sam's age. Don't you love this stuff? Let's check out another problem. All right, let's check this problem out. It says, when Pam got on the bus, some people were on the bus. So she got on, some people were on already. Five people got on the bus at the next stop. And now there are nine people on the bus. How many were on the bus when Pam got on. So we know how many people are on the bus now. We got to work backwards to figure out how many were there before Pam. We're going to talk in a future video how quite often we combine strategies to solve problems. And for this problem, I'm going to use the strategy of drawing a picture, but I'm going to use dots as we discuss in the drawing a picture problem solving strategy video and go go watch that if you haven't yet so we know there are nine people on the bus and i'm going to organize my picture like a 10 frame if you're familiar with what a 10 frame is two rows of five but of course because but of course because we have only nine how a 10 frame will not be filled Okay, so five people got on the bus at the last stop. So they couldn't be on the bus when Pam got on. So let's take five people and let's move them out of the way. Now I know you can't just move things on your paper, but you can take a line and just cross them out. That would work as well. So there's four people left, but of course one of them's Pam, so let's cross that out. So how many people are left? 
Three. So how many people were on the bus when Pam got on? And the answer is three. We worked backwards from nine, took away the five people that got on the last stop. We took away Pam, and we see that we have three left over. All right, nicely done, my fellow mathematicians. All right, so now I'm going to give you a couple of problems. Hit pause, see if you can solve them yourself, and then hit play again and see if we got the same answer. Now here's a problem to work out on your own. But before we get started, let me give you a hint and a heads up. The hint is you might want to use the draw a picture strategy like we used earlier in the lesson. And the heads up is there'll be a part two to this question. All right, let's dive in. Jill has eight pets. She has one dog. The rest are birds and goldfish. She has four goldfish. How many birds does she have? All right, work backwards starting with eight and solve for the answer. Hit pause. I'll be here when you get back and we'll solve it together. All right, welcome back. Let's see how you did. The first thing they're telling us is that Jill has eight pets. So I'm gonna use dots to show her eight pets. And I'm going to organize them in a 10 frame. Two rows of five. But, if we, but because there's not 10, it won't be full. Eight. It then says she has one dog. The rest are birds and goldfish, and she has four goldfish. Three, four, and the rest are birds. How many birds does she have? Well, here's the rest. Count them, one, two, three, three birds. So how'd you do? So here's the second part of our problem. We now know how many birds Jill has. Well, Jill has a parrot and the rest of her birds are finches. How many finches does she have? All right, once again, let's stop here, hit pause, solve for the answer, come back, I'll be here waiting. We'll go over and see how you did. Well, in part one of the problem, we saw that she has three birds all together. So let's draw a picture in the 10 frame, format anyway. And it says one of her birds is a parrot. So I'm gonna label the parrot. So another thing I could do is just put a P over here. P is for parrot. The rest of her birds are finches. So I'm going to put an F over here, I'll label that an F, I'll label that an F. And the question says, how many finches does she have? Well, we know we labeled our finches with Fs, so the answer would be two. Jill has two finches. Okay, so there you go. Having a problem? is not a problem because there's always a solution. So take care, my fellow mathematicians, and we'll see you next time.